also tonight. It was the darkest period of my life. All the time I was scared of to be detained or deported. Immigration, could come to the door, please. The fight for compensation for the people wrongly accused of cheating in English tests no, they sat for their visas. Now, Newsnight understands the Home Office is preparing to settle some compensation claims from people wrongly accused of cheating in English tests they sat for their visas. Two weeks ago, this programme revealed fundamental flaws in the data used by the department to take immigration enforcement action against tens of thousands of people, mostly international students. They'd been accused of cheating by getting someone else to sit an exam called a TOEIC, Teaching of English for International Communication. But critics of the government say there's been a huge miscarriage of justice and many are innocent. If compensation is paid, it would be a milestone in these cases. But as Richard Watson reports, many who suffered terrible hardships may struggle to bring a claim. Asiya Aram came to the UK from Pakistan with her daughters in 2007. I think this one. She passed an advanced diploma in business in London, then worked in schools. But in 2015, the Home Office wrote to her saying she'd obtained her student visa by deception by cheating in a TOEIC English exam. The letter said an anomaly in her speaking test indicated that someone else, a proxy, had taken her test. Did you cheat? No, not at all. Because when I came to this country, I did my English test before that. After that, I was working as a teaching and learning associate in this country for two years. How can I cheat if I was teaching other people, other teenagers, how can I cheat? Asiya was one of tens of thousands of test takers accused of TOEIC immigration fraud. Many were thrown out of the UK with no right of appeal and without being shown the evidence against them. It was the darkest period of my life. All the time I was scared of to be detained or deported. Asiya was allowed to stay in the UK while an asylum claim was processed but she and her daughters were banned from working or studying. With their savings exhausted, they relied on loans and food banks. They made us beggars in front of our friends. More than 80,000 pounds, we, we have to give them back. All three were ordered to sign in at a home office building every month. One day in 2018, officials demanded to interview Asiya's daughters on their own. They took us to the holding room. We sat there and then they put handcuffs on us. Handcuffs? Yes. So I said, we're not criminals. They called me and they were crying on phone and they were telling me, Mom, they are taking us to the detention center. And that time I was, I wanted to die at that time because as mother, I couldn't help them. They were detained at a holding center near Heathrow. Only an emergency legal challenge stopped them from being deported. The first day we went there, um, the first night we spent in Harmonsworth Detention Centre, we were in a Sahara unit. I started developing um, suicidal thoughts. I did have them. And then they put me on constant watch. They were held for seven days. I was crying so bad and I, I was like, I want to, you know, shout, like, why, why we are here? The fraud accusation against their mother came a year after an undercover panorama film had exposed widespread cheating at two London TOEIC test centres. We were the journalists behind that story. After the film, the American organisation that set the exams, ETS, used voice recognition software to try to identify students who cheated. Astonishingly, it concluded that 56,000 TOEIC test takers had either definitely or probably faked their exams. The Home Office accepted the ETS data without question. Thousands of people had their visas cancelled or were deported on the sole basis of ETS's evidence. Two weeks ago, we revealed fundamental flaws in this data. More than four out of ten people who've appealed their cases have won at tribunal. 
Up to now, the Home Office has not paid compensation to those wrongly accused. We've learned that might be about to change. We're aware of 26 compensation claims underway. In what would be a major development in this story, we understand the Home Office is now prepared to settle some of these claims out of court. So how might compensation claims work? There are two established routes. The Human Rights Act, which protects private and family life, and unlawful detention for the considerable number of people who are imprisoned pending deportation. But there is a third potential route, data protection. In simple terms, the Home Office were under a duty to look at this evidence carefully and scrutinise the evidence, and when more evidence became available that called it into question, to look at that with even greater scrutiny. And the failure to do so is what's led to so much injustice. The failure to verify the ETS data before taking such drastic action is a major weakness for the Home Office. And there are obvious flaws in the cases we've come across. But the Home Office has taken so long defending its actions that many people's claims would now be too old and would be ruled inadmissible. There's clear advantage to the Home Office for the proceedings to have, uh, to have been protracted due to the fact that, of course, individuals will have fallen outside of any ability to obtain compensation. The family is beginning to get back on track. Asia has just won a case to stay in the UK on human rights grounds. Perhaps tellingly, in court, the Home Office failed to present any evidence she cheated in a TOEIC. They can't afford a lawyer, but believe the government should offer them compensation. Yeah, yeah they have to. Because of them, everyone's life got ruined. We suffered a lot because of Home Office decision. The Home Office wouldn't comment on whether it's preparing to pay compensation, but said the evidence we had at the time was sufficient to take action. A key question now is whether it will try to settle the strongest claims out of court without accepting liability, or whether it will finally admit the ETS data it's relied on is flawed.